This video is about chevrule salt, and we're going to make some. Chevrule salt is an interesting copper compound for a couple of reasons. It's a mixed valence sulfite. Basically, it has uh, copper atoms in the plus one and plus two excitation states. It's also a brick red crystalline solid which isn't terribly common for copper salts, which as we well know, are normally blue or green. To prepare chevrule salt, in the 500 milliliter beaker on the left, I've taken 12 grams of copper sulfate and I've dissolved it in 200 milliliters of water. The beaker on the right is a 250 milliliter beaker. I've dissolved 10 grams of sodium metabisulfite into 100 milliliters of water. There'll be a color change when I add the sodium metabisulfite to the uh, copper sulfate. With the two added together, the solution turns a beautiful bright green color. Now in order to get our chevrule salt, I have to heat this beaker to boiling. The color will uh, go dark as the chevrule salt forms and begins to precipitate. So I'll get this beaker under some heat and pick up the video as the chevrule salt begins to form. I've placed the beaker in my heating mantle and turned on the heat. We'll wait a few minutes for boiling and the chemical change. While we're waiting for this to heat up and uh, come to boiling, I should point out that the uh, sodium metabisulfite solution does give off a faint smell of sulfur dioxide, so if you do this experiment, you probably want to do it with uh, very good ventilation so you don't get to uh, the smell. Either do it outside, under a fume hood, or somewhere where you have uh, very powerful ventilation. This has just begun to heat. The surface is scumming over a bit, which is normal. And I've turned on my ventilation system, which you can probably hear at this point, because of the faint smell of sulfur dioxide. The solution is now a little warmer. We can see that steam is beginning to be evolved and that the scum or crust forming on the surface is a little thicker and it's slightly yellowish red at the very edge of the scum. This means that uh, we're getting a little chevrule salt just beginning to form but it's still not quite hot enough. As we get closer and closer to boiling, we can see that the color of the solution is steadily darkening. With the aid of an LED flashlight, we can now see that chevrule salt is forming as we are almost at boiling. As it heats up a little more, the formation of the chevrule salt will accelerate. Here's another look at the formation of the chevrule salt in the solution as it heats. We can see that it's beginning to collect as uh, shiny brick red crystals on the bottom of the beaker. Here's another look at it as it begins to boil. I'll let the reaction continue for a few minutes and then uh, I'll switch over to uh, vacuum filtration setup to recover the chevrule salt. As the reaction proceeds, we can see that the greenish color 
that went to a really dark green is now clearing and we're left mostly with the uh, brick red color of the uh, chivril salt. With the aid of the LED flashlight we can see after a couple of minutes of gentle boiling that the solution is clearing up with the, mostly the red color of the chivril salt remaining. This is nearly completed and ready to cool down and filter. I've set up for vacuum filtration and it's now time to recover the chivril salt. Precipitate is very heavy, so the liquid is coming off first. I'll get all the liquid off, add a little wash water to the beaker, and get the chevrule salt coming out. It's quite heavy, so it takes uh, a few washes to get it out of the bottom of the beaker. The chivril salt is now in the filter paper. I'll stop vacuum filtration and get a look at the product when the filter paper's been spread out. Here's a look at the recovered chivril salt on the filter paper. As we can clearly see, this is a brick red in color. An interesting color for a copper salt. Here I've placed a pinch of chevrule salt in the bottom of a test tube. I'm going to add dilute hydrochloric acid to this. We can see that there was some fizzing and we have a color change to green as well as a precipitate slowly settling out to the bottom of the test tube. We can see it collecting in the bottom as we give this a few seconds to clear. This is copper 1 chloride that's precipitating out into the bottom of the test tube. If it was copper 2 chloride, dilute hydrochloric acid would dissolve it. So this little test shows us that there is a copper 1 in chevrule salt. Again, I have a test tube with a pinch of uh, chevrule salt in it. This time I'm going to add some uh, grocery store uh, liquid ammonia. Unfortunately, my ammonia has a slightly yellow tint because it came from the grocery store and they put a little uh, coloring in it.
Despite the impurities, though, when we had the ammonia to the chevreul salt, we got the telltale blue color of tetraamine copper 2. This shows that there is copper 2 in chevreul salt as well as copper 1.